Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <coughs> Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari Hari Krishna Chaitanya Bhuni Chinanda Shiva Ida Kadhar Shiva Sadi Gaurva Inanda Takes all types Takes all types Hari Krishna Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Runi Chinanda, Shri Avaita Gadhar, Shri Vasudhi Gaur Vakarana. Krishna. So there's a problem in the garden. Small rodents, they're called voles. It's like a little field mouse. They, they're very active and they multiply very quickly and they burrow underground. There's different kinds of little rodents that go underground. Some of them eat bugs, but some of them eat the roots of plants and trees. And that's what voles do. So, I'd heard that wood chips make a great mulch in a garden. And they do. So, there are a lot of down tree branches here. I, I got a small little chipper, works real good. And I made buckets and buckets and buckets of wood chips. And I did the whole garden in wood chips. Well, turns out that's the ideal environment for these rodents. They love to burrow underneath the wood chips. It's just perfect for them. They love it. So now there's a big problem with voles. They're underneath everywhere in the garden. It's a big garden. <clears throat> I don't know how big, maybe uh, I don't know, maybe thirty-five feet by two hundred feet, maybe, just guessing. I mean it's big, it's a big plot there. <clears throat> and it is bowl heaven. So I planted carrots. <laughs> Forget it. They go underneath, and when I go to get the carrot, there's no carrot. They eat the carrot. Planted sweet potatoes, same thing. They love stuff like that. And I'm seeing other plants disappear also. It's like, they just disappear, because they're eating the roots. <coughs> so what to do, what to do? Um, <coughs> it's a matter of management. Um, they have a right to live too. Um, there's a lot of 
land and woods and everything. I mean, they could go out there, but they like the garden because the, the ground is soft, it's been tilled, and there's good things to eat in there. So, Hare Krishna. <clears throat> so I went to the um, home improvement store. <clears throat> in this area, Lowe's is the one everybody goes to. And I was looking at, like, hardware cloth. I was thinking to make, dig out a trench and line it with the hardware cloth. It's metal. So they wouldn't be able to get to the plants. Not necessarily a raised bed, but just dig out a trench and line it with this hardware cloth. It comes in 10 foot rolls, three feet wide. So it could go down a foot and could allow a foot for the plants, which would be fine. If the little tips of their roots go out through the cloth, I mean, that's no big deal. It's just, I don't want them to get the potatoes and the, <laughs> and the carrots, you know, and the main part of the plant's roots, because it kills the plant. They nibble on some of the roots, it's not a big deal, but I'm thinking they would get discouraged and just go find some other garden to hang out in. So I looked, and it's very expensive. We went to Lowe's, and they've got these 10-foot rolls, just the perfect hardware cloth, just what I need, but it's very expensive. It's like $15 a roll, and I would need at least 15 or 16 rolls, and it, I just don't want to spend the money. I'm living very frugally. What to do, what to do. So I was standing there in the section, and three of the workers came. And they started pulling down these, just exactly what I needed, from the top, very top shelf where the storage is, and putting it in a special bin um, on sale, clearance, four ninety five. I'm like, what? What? It's exactly what I need. And... That's within budget. If I didn't have to spend anything, I would be happy. But that's within budget. I'm like, no. Come on. Coincidence? So I took them a 16 rolls. And it was, you know, what, 16 times basically 5. Yeah, it was a lot of money. But it was a lot less than... $15 a roll, and it's for the garden, you know, it, it pays for itself when you have nice wholesome vegetables that haven't been factory farmed or sprayed with chemicals or herbicides or pesticides or whatever. So, yeah, Krishna, <laughs> it was like that all day, it was like that all day. Krishna. It was Krishna all day. That was one way Krishna. Was, oh, Krishna. He's got his hand in this. <clears throat> and then I had to return some PVC pipe and the little corners that go on the ends if you're going to make right angles. So to carry them, I had them on my fingers, the little corners. I was holding them that way. And when I went to the return desk, the lady behind the desk. She said, oh, let's take the jewelry first. The little pipe corners of my fingers. And it put me in a state of remembering Krishna. Krishna's jewelry. Krishna's form. He's decorated with jewelry on his fingers. Not exactly PVC pipe corners. But it reminded me of someone serving Krishna by attending to the jewelry that he wears. And I was immediately put in that state of remembering Krishna. It was like that all day. Everything did that. Everything. And that's what I want. 
everything remind me of Krishna. Everything catapult me out of this identification with material, temporary material forms and connect me with Krishna. That's what I want. So it's pretty much like that all day. And the more I read, the more intense it got. And the more I read, the more intense it gets. So I'm limiting outside, um, hanging out with this one and talking with that one. I'm, I'm, I'm minimizing that. It actually, if it would go away completely, I would be very, very grateful <clears throat> so that I can just focus on Krishna. I remember um, training in ashram life. That was not part of the environment in the ashram in the temple. Was talking about this and talking. It wasn't. It wasn't part of it. It was conspicuous by its absence. Everything was for serving Krishna. Everything. So trying to recreate that environment. I'm not a student now. I'm not, you know, 20 years old in the ashram. We were old students. Usually students are five, six, ten years old, but Prabhupada had to start somewhere. So he took his children from those that were Legally, uh, it was okay for them to live in an ashram. So we were big kids. But <clears throat> I'm going to recreate that environment where we don't talk about all this other stuff unnecessarily. Get out of here. No. We don't want it. No. Idle chatter. So there's one verse that keeps sticking in my mind from Gita is work for Vishnu has to be performed. And actually that 12th chapter of Gita is simply wonderful. The chapter on devotional service. Simply wonderful. Imperishable path of devotional service. It's just wonderful. Krishna is very clear in the beginning. He says, This is the highest uh, most perfect highest practice. He whose mind is fixed on my personal form always engaged in worshiping me with great and transcendental faith is considered by me to be most perfect. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. For one who worships me, giving up all his activities unto me, and being devoted to me without deviation, Engage in devotional service, always meditating upon me, who has fixed his mind upon me, O son of Prita. For him, I am the swift deliverer of the ocean of birth and death. Just fix your mind upon me, the supreme personality of Godhead. Engage all your intelligence in me. Thus you will live in me always, without a doubt. That's it. Fix your mind upon me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Engage your intelligence in me. You'll live in me always, without a doubt. But then Krishna says, if you cannot fix your mind upon me without deviation, Then follow regulative principles of bhakti yoga. 
In this way, you will develop a desire to retain me. Oh, that's perfect. In this verse, two different processes of bhakti yoga are indicated. The first applies to one who has actually developed an attachment for Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by transcendental love. And the other is for one who has not developed an attachment for the Supreme Person by transcendental love, for the second class, there are different prescribed rules, regulations, which one can follow to be ultimately elevated to the stage of attachment to Krishna. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna Krishna Wow It's a prescription giving the prescription And then the last verse in that chapter 12 is Ye tu dharma mritami dham Yatoktam paripashate Shraddhana mat parama Bhaktas te tiva me priya He who follows this imperishable path of devotional service and who completely engages himself with faith, making me the supreme goal, is very, very dear to me. Imperishable path of devotional service completely engages himself with faith, making me the supreme goal. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. No, Krishna book. We were, um, the 10th Canto, Summary Study of the Srimad Bhagavatam by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada, Founder Acharya of the International Society for. Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> and we had just read the pastime of killing Dantavakra, Vidurata, and Ramaharshan. Ramaharshan was killed by Balaram. For his um, Offense defended Balaram um, by presenting himself or taking the post of representing Srila Vyasadeva in the Assembly of Sages at Namasharanya. He had been elected to the position, but he wasn't qualified. So much for elections. <laughs> so he was removed unceremoniously by Balaram by touching him with a piece of straw, the kind of straw they use for making mats that yogis sit on to meditate, kusha straw, kusha grass. Killed him with a blade of grass. And then his son, Ugasrava Sutta, was instate, reinstated on the Vyasasana to represent the father. The Brahmins were all upset. This is like killing a Brahmin. You're setting such a terrible example. Because they're all Brahmins, right? <laughs> they said, I guess they started to become a little fearful 
that <clears throat> it made them kind of uh, vulnerable to being killed because Balaram, the Supreme Personality of Gaia, killed the Brahmin. <clears throat> so it's okay. <clears throat> but um, so Balaram took some penance and to set a good example, he was acting as a Kshatriya. And they, um, he left it open to the assembly what penance he should perform for this uh, transgression. <clears throat> and they asked him to please <clears throat> kill a demon named Balvala, whose favorite hobby was to come to <clears throat> where the sages were meeting and dump vile, su vile substances on the sacrificial arena, like stool, urine, blood, pus, who knows what else. <clears throat> so there's Balvala. We're going to hear about what happens to him. <clears throat> Lord Balaram prepared himself to meet the demon Balvala. At the time when the demon usually attacked the sacred place, there appeared a great hailstorm. The whole sky became covered with dust and the atmosphere became surcharged with a filthy smell. Hailstorm, dust, and a nasty smell. Just after this, the mischievous demon Balvala began to shower torrents of stool and urine and other impure substances on the arena of sacrifice. After this onslaught, the demon himself appeared with a great trident in his hand. He was a gigantic person, and his black body was like a huge mass of carbon. His hair, his beard, and his mustache appeared reddish like copper. Because of his great beard and mustache, his mouth appeared very dangerous and fierce. As soon as he saw the demon, Lord Balaram prepared to attack him. He first began to consider how he could smash the great demon to pieces. Lord Balaram called for his plow and club, and they immediately appeared before him. The demon Balvala was flying in the sky, and at the first opportunity, Lord Balaram dragged him down with his plow and angrily smashed the demon's head with his club. By Balaram striking the forehead of the demon, became fractured. There was a profuse flow of blood from his forehead, and he began to scream loudly. In this way, the demon, who had been such a great disturbance to the pious Brahmins, fell to the ground. His falling was like a great mountain with red oxide peak being struck by a thunderbolt and smashed to the ground. The inhabitants of Namasharanya, learned sages and brahmanas, became most pleased by seeing this and they offered their respectful obeisances to Lord Balaram. They offered their heartfelt blessings upon the Lord and all agreed that Lord Balaram's attempt to do anything would never be a failure. Balaram's acting as a Kshatriya. He is the Supreme Personality of God and he can do anything, but he's acting as a Kshatriya. The sages and Brahmanas then performed a ceremonial bathing of Lord Balaram, just as King Indra is bathed by the demigods when he is victorious over the demons. The Brahmanas and sages honored Lord Balaram by presenting him first class new clothing and ornaments and lotus flower garland of victory, the reservoir of all beauty, which is never to be dried up, being in everlasting existence. The lotus flower garland of victory, the reservoir of all beauty, which was never to be dried up, being in everlasting existence, the lotus flower garland of victory, eternally existent, Lotus flower garland of victory. After this incident, Lord Balaram took permission from the Brahmanas assembled at Namasharanya and accompanied by other Brahmanas went to the bank 
of River Koshiki. After taking his bath in this holy place, so he took permission from some of the brahmanas, and he was accompanied by other brahmanas who went to the bank of the river Koshiki. After taking his bath in this holy place, he proceeded toward the river Sarayu and visited the source of the river. He began to travel on the bank of the Sarayu River, and he gradually reached Prayag, where there is a confluence of three rivers, the Ganges, Yamuna, and Saraswati. Wow, they all converge at Prayag, the Ganges, the Yamuna, and the Saraswati. Here also, he regularly took his bath, worshipped the local temples of God, and as it is enjoined in Vedic literature, offered oblations to the forefathers and sages. So he's, he's on pilgrimage, and that's when he stopped in at Namasharanya and found some problems there. The unqualified um, speaker sitting on the Vyasasana, so he fixed that, and then there was a demon that was bothering the sages, and he fixed that. So then he continued on in his pilgrimage. And the reason he's traveling is the Battle of Kurukshetra is um, is beginning to form and take place, and he's not being allowed to fight on either side. So without fighting, I'm just going to go on pilgrimage. If I can't take part in the fighting, I'm going to go on pilgrimage. He gradually reached the ashram of the sage Pulaha, and from there went to Gandaki on the river Gomati. After this, he took his bath in the river Vipassa. <clears throat> then gradually he came to the bank of the Sona River. The Sona River is still running as one of the big rivers in the Behar province. He took his bath there and performed Vedic ritualistic ceremonies. <clears throat> he continued his travels and gradually came to the pilgrimage site of Gaya, where there is a celebrated Vishnu temple. Now, isn't Gaya where Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu um, also went on pilgrimage and where he met Ishwar Puri at Gaya? Isn't that the same Gaya? Five thousand years later. According to the advice of his father Vasudev, he offered oblations to the forefathers in this Vishnu temple. From here he traveled to the delta of the Ganges. According to the advice of his father Vasudev. How did he consult with Vasudev? Maybe Vasudev told him about this temple, if you ever go there. Um, yes, it must have been, because according to the advice of his father Vasudev, he offered oblations to the forefathers in this Vishnu temple. He must have been instructed when he was in the house of his father that that was the place <clears throat> to offer oblations to the forefathers his forefathers. From here he traveled to the delta of the Ganges, where the sacred river Ganges mixes with the Bay of Bengal. This sacred place is called Ganga Sagara. <clears throat> yeah, that Gaya is the same Gaya, because we're here uh, near Bengal. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, appearances in that area of Bengal. They're all Bengalis. Navadweep, Mayapur, it's all in Bengal. So Gaya also, not far away. <clears throat> this sacred place is called Ganga Sagara, and at the end of January every year, there is still a great assembly of saintly persons and pious men, just as there is an assembly of saintly persons in Prayag. 
every year, which is called the Magmela Fair. Magmela Fair. So Prayag is where the Ganges, the Yamuna, and the Saraswati all converge. And there is a great assembly of persons every year there called Magmela. Is that Kumbha Mela or Magmela? Hmm. Anyway, it's a Mela. And here where the Ganges mixes with the Bay of Bengal is also a sacred place. And uh, at the end of January, there was a great assembly of saintly persons there. <clears throat> After finishing his bathing and ritualistic ceremonies at Ganga Sagara, Lord Balaram proceeded toward the mountain known as Mahendra Parvata. At this place, he met Parashuram, the incarnation of Lord Krishna, and he offered him respect by bowing down before him. The incarnation, his brother's incarnation, Parashuram. After this, he gradually turned <clears throat> towards southern India and visited the banks of the river Godavari. After taking his bath on the river of Godavari and performing the necessary relig ritualistic ceremonies, he gradually visited the other rivers. I wonder what these ritualistic ceremonies were. He's doing ritualistic ceremonies at all these holy places. I wonder what. <clears throat> So after ritualistic ceremonies in this place, <clears throat> he visited other rivers, Vena, Pampa, Bhimarati. On the bank of the river Bhimarati, there is a deity called Swami Kartikeya. After visiting Kartikeya, Lord Balaram gradually proceeded to Shailapur. Katikeya is the son of, uh, is the leader of, is he the son? Anyway, he's associated with Lord Shiva. I think he's the leader of Lord Shiva's military. <clears throat> After visiting Kartikeya, Lord Balaram gradually proceeded to Shailapur, a pilgrimage site in the province of Maharashtra. Now Maharashtra is where uh, Tukaram appeared many, you know, 5,000 years later, Tukaram. And Lord Chaitanya also toured southern India. And Tugaram took initiation from Mahaprabhu. He's in Maharashtra province and honored as a great saint you know, for his pure chanting in ecstasy of the holy names of Krishna. Silapur is one of the biggest districts in Maharashtra province. He then gradually proceeded towards Dravidadesh. Southern India is divided into five parts called Panchadrita, Panchadravida. Northern India is also divided into five parts, parts called Panchagora. All the important <coughs> acharyas of the modern age, namely Shankar Acharya, Ramanuja Acharya, Madhva Acharya, Vishnu Swami, and Nimbarka invented themselves in these Dravida provinces. That's the southern <clears throat> divisions. <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya appeared in Bengal, which is part of the five Goradesh provinces. So Goradesh is northern India. The most important place of pilgrimage in southern India, or Dravida, is Venkata 
Bacilli, commonly known as Balaji. After visiting this place, Lord Balaram proceeded toward Vishnu Kanchi, and from there he proceeded on the bank of the Kaveri. He took his bath in the river Kaveri, then he gradually reached Rambhashetra. What in, what in India? Let's take a look. Map of India. Boy, India. Every every part of it is like surcharged. <clears throat> surcharged with uh, Krishna. Where's the equator in relationship to India? Yeah, India is above the equator. India is above the equator. Huh. <clears throat> the most important place of pilgrimage in southern India, or Dravida, <clears throat> is Venkatachala commonly known as Balaji. After visiting this place, Lord Balaram proceeded toward Vishnu Kanchi, and from there he proceeded on the bank of the Kaveri. He took his bath in the river Kaveri, then he gradually reached Rangashetra. The biggest temple in the world is in Rangashetra, and the Vishnu deity there is celebrated as Ranganath. A, simple temp a similar temple of Ranganath is in Vrindavan, although it is not as big as the temple in Rangashetra. Right, this is really nice taking this tour. It's uh, going on pilgrimage with Balaram. Krishna, sometimes devotees do that if they have the means and the ability they'll go and visit these, as many of these different sacred places as they can and um, go on pilgrimage. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna. Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Okay, southern India. Looks like nobody. Oh, all the rivers are here. Godavari. Looking at a map here. Huh. Ganges is in the north. Yamuna is very far north. <clears throat> Yamuna. Yeah. Krishna. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. She had a way to get at her. Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhaktivinanda. Hare Krishna. <clears throat>